Okay, uh, well, this is our final day on site. Uh, so last minute recording, sorting things out, photography, and then we're ready to backfill tomorrow. So we know, we know the story now, and it is, it's quite remarkable that we came looking for one wagon way, which we knew was here, the 1722 one, and found another two replacement ones superimposed on the top. So what we've got here in front of us, the 1722 one, constructed by William Dixon. We've got his diaries, we know that. William Dixon and Mann were working on this for years. And we've actually, for the first time, got a tangible bit of evidence for that. This bit of wood that survives in the bottom was cut by William Dixon in 1722 or 1723. So for the first wagon way, what they've done is just laid this parallel series of logs. Basically half round, you can see the carve of the wood there. They've just halved them, put them in the ground. Every so often, we presume, we've only got one of them, but every so often we presume the sleepers are longer. So this one comes out through here and we got it in our trench last year, but didn't fully understand what it was with hindsight it's now a long sort of stabilizing sleeper so you've got this corduroy road effect going all the way from the pits to the salt pans on top of that they then add the rails so believe it or not that's mineralized wood coming through here and the soft core material is dried out a bit so it doesn't show very well but trust me that's the remains of a rail the other rail would be just on on side uh, the archaeological, archaeological evidence seems to be telling us that there was nothing between them and when the horses were pulling the wagons back up they were basically walking on what is described as an oak surface. I mean these are presumably oak, oak beams. You know a, a period after that it becomes so rickety and unstable they completely replace it. The gauge is quite narrow, that's three foot three. They enlarge the gauge and one sleeper beam is put in there, another sleeper beam is put in there, and then they, between it, they ram in these large cobbles. So that's the foundation between the rails. We know now that there are, from some evidence we've got down here, other sleepers coming through underneath. So tying them together. Then they put the actual rails on and then they fill it full of the small, smaller cobbles. It's got bits of glass slag and everything. And that's the, that's the working surface. So that's the phase two railway. Phase three, again, that goes completely, it gets rotten, it gets wobbly. They replace it again. Put the rails back in the same position and this hard, compact, uh, small coal stuff is dumped in and then we've got evidence of the Thai sleepers coming through here and here. So we've left that in situ. This is one of the rail lines coming down here and you can see the, the small compact cobble surface put on. These voids you've got here indicate that there's a, a rotten sleeper underneath here and as we come further north this thing here, which doesn't look like much, but that's a mineralized timber running from about here through to there. So you, the outside is mineralized and the inside is rotten away, much as it has in that one and that one there. Brilliantly, which is absolutely a brilliant bit of survival and fortuitous, we have mineralized wood coming through here. This ready brown stuff, absolutely solid. So that's the sleeper beam or the rail for the, the middle phase of wagon way. And then we have a joint coming through here, joint to the sleeper. So having that evidence of where the sleeper and the rail ties together is amazing. Presumably it's like a lap joint or a tenon or something with a wooden pin put through it to hold it in place. And then beginning of the 19th century, it's all it's all urbanized, not urbanized, industrialized even more. And they put in these low walls 
this all gets filled in and the iron wagon way is set on top of which all evidence of that has been removed salvaged recycled apart from a few scrap bits that have been left so over the couple of days we've thrown at this we have just produced you know amazing results three wagon ways three wooden wagon ways for the price of one is just astounding and you know it's a, it's now you know it really is a nationally important site the the salt pan we dug as well we can now confidently say that is nationally important as well because it's the only one that tells the story from 1630 through to the Victorian house that's demolished in the 1940s so a fantastic lot of work by some dedicated volunteers so thank you to them all <laughs>